Welcome to video 22. If you have watched all 22 of these videos, I commend you and you will receive a prize. There you go. There's your prize. All right. Welcome to lesson 22. We'll talk about time frames. First examples. Second rule of three. Third time frame hierarchy. Fourth time frame confluence. Fifth. We'll look at live charts. Nope. Not doing live charts. But if you want a live chart analysis, ask for it. One, we naturally narrow the scope to get exactly what we want. If you want to buy a vehicle, we ask questions and narrow it down from a broader, broader scope. Sometimes as we narrow the scope, we determine it's not what we want and zoom out and change and narrow back down again. Maybe you wanted a car, but after narrowing the scope, you determined you needed something bigger for the long term to support a growing family. Two, it usually takes three questions to narrow down the scope of what we want to an answer. This isn't some random thing, so we're not playing 20 questions. We have a broad idea and we're narrowing it down. Most traders use three time frames on their trades. So do I. You can think of it as the smallest time frame being the microscope, the middle being what you want to see from see in front of you, and the higher time frame being the view from a watchtower. In Wilderness Guiding, I explain this con concept of awareness in our lives as the hike we're on. You're not 100% focused on each step or where you are or where you're going. You share your awareness between the three of these things to not trip or step on a cactus, follow the best path a near distance in front of you, and to get where you're intending to go. So you're looking down at your feet, you're looking just ahead, and where you want to go. Eliminate one of the three levels of awareness and you increase risk at your own peril. If you're not watching your feet, you're going to fall. If you're not watching immediately in front of you, you may end up at a cliff. And if you're not watching where, you're gonna, where you want to go in the end, who knows where the hell you're going to end up. Okay, back to trading. We talked in a previous lesson about types of traders and the time frames they use. I recommend if you're starting out trading to start on the one hour and you can be precise on the... And you can be precise on the 15 minute, like so you can narrow down to the 15 minute to get better confirmation and get the big, bigger picture on the four hour. So down to the 15 minute, up to the four hour and executing on the one hour. The lower time frame will help you narrow down your entry and stop loss. The middle time frame is where you are finding your setups and the higher time frame can validate your lower time frame and show you if you're trading with the trend. Once again, if I'm going too fast, pause the video. Three, time frame hierarchy. The higher the time frame, the more respected demands. Trend line, support and resistance, candles, etc. I often use four time frames and get more in depth on my analysis as I go down. I want the higher time frames to conform, confirm my moves on the lower time frame. If the daily completely negates my 15 minute trade, I'm out. Or I don't take the trade in the first place. A confluence is where two rivers run into each other and carry on as one. We're trying to, f to align three rivers, which represents our time frames, into one strong flowing river or trade. It's always easier to go with the current. On the four hour, we have an uptrend and support and resistance. Then on the one hour, we're close to support in a double bottom and buy zone. We have a potential take profit area at a recent sell zone. On the 15 minute, we come close to support and we wait to see a tweezer bottom formed. We have three time frames lined up to tell us this is a good potential trade. Now remember, no matter how many confirmations you stack, you're only increasing your odds and you will never find certainty in the market. If someone is claiming you to be, if someone else is claiming to be a guru and, they, and that they win 90% of the time, you already know they're full of crap. There's things that people can say to you where you don't have to listen to anything else. If somebody's a liar, why would you listen to anything else they say? Run. If someone can win 90% of the time, they'd be the richest person in the world. Look at compounding interest. And by 90% of the time, you could win 90% of the time, but are you trading once a month? But if you're winning 90% of the time and you're taking 10 trades a month, you should be the richest person in the world and you're not gonna be teaching people. If someone can win 90% of the time, they'd be the richest person in the world. Look at compounding interest. 5% a week will turn $10,000 into 120, 
$126,000 in one year, $1.6 million in two years, $20 million in three years, $255 million in four years, three and a quarter billion in five years, $38 billion in six years, $480 billion in seven, 90% win rate. The reason I'm going off on this is because trading is hard. Don't let anybody tell you any different. It's not easy. That's one of the things that somebody can say. If somebody says trading is really easy, you don't have to listen to anything else. Most people teach cherry picked examples and make it look easy. I'm telling you right now, they may be good and profitable, but they're not that good. Every single guru I've known putting out signals eventually stops because most of them will be bunk signals because traders aren't profits. We win the law of averages. We win with the law of averages. Even when I see people teaching live trading, it's their cherry picked winners being played back for you. That's not live trading. If you go and try and find my live trading examples and half of them do what I bet on, then I'm doing. If half of my trades are profitable that I do live, then I'm an amazing, I'm a phenomenal trader. And if you actually get on live calls with traders, they hardly ever take a live trade. Slide seven, like a truly live. Five, non-confluence on three time frames. This is once again something you should test for yourself. You can trade without confluence on three time frames and just have confluence only one time frame up because of the difference in timing from trading on the 15 minute and comparing it to the four hour. I recently tracked a series of 85 trades for a new strategy that were made on the 15 minute and hourly time frame and compared each trade to the past 24 hours of trend being bullish or bearish. I won 15 trades that were non-confluent and won eight that were confluent. And this series of trades confluence on three time frames wasn't helping me and would have made me miss trades if it was required in my trading plan. So this is a good example of figure it out yourself. To be a professional trader, you need to be able to improve, create, and adapt your method. The market is random and chaotic enough. You have to be able to adjust. There's no such liquidity in the market that anyone with enough brains, there's so much liquidity in the market that anyone with enough brains and money would be able to create a surefire method with enough brains and money would be able to create a surefire method uh, that anybody, anybody with enough resources is able to create would if there was a way to create a surefire method there's people out there with enough resources they would have figured it out and they'd be worth hundreds of billions but nobody's worth hundreds of billions because there isn't otherwise you would see hedge funds doing much better numbers than they are 20 percent a year is outstanding for a hedge fund and the ones that do it even that in my opinion are doing it illegally or unethically however you want to put it they're cheating. That's what I should say. All right, that's it. And they also have algorithmic trading. So like I have enough resources that I'm profitable, so they don't necessarily have to cheat, but they have enough resources and they get caught all the time and get a slap on the wrist that I'm sorry. I've it's interesting to hear some of the people in the trading community not think that like they don't cheat. They do. They get caught and they get a slap on the wrist most of the time. And the guys that get prison time are usually not the guys that were in charge. They're guys lower on the totem pole. Anyways, I'm going to get off my high horse. Thanks. Thanks for watching.